Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, the situation for this generation in the United Kingdom with regard to boxing is so deep. It's so deep that not only do you have many of the best heavyweights in the world, either from the UK or fighting in the UK, right? Guys like Joseph Parker, Martin Bacoli traveled to the UK to fight there. But you also have the best boxing journalism in terms of established figures in the sport, guys with status in the sport who are actually on par with or above the British boxing promoters and who could actually be a boogeyman for the sport in terms of talking about what a lot of us are thinking about that the promoters have to respond to. Now make no mistake, Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren, and they've been collaborating together of late, right? They are two of the biggest promoters in the sport. No question about it. But understand, one of the biggest figures in recent heavyweight history is a guy who, believe it or not, has a CBE designation. You know how the UK has titles, right? CBE stands for Commander of the British Empire, right? This guy is a former undisputed heavyweight champion. He actually retired with the belt. His name is Lennox Lewis, and Lennox Lewis is holding boxing accountable. He's a guy who these promoters can't just brush aside. When he makes comments, people listen. So on X, Lennox Lewis earlier today left the following comment. He says, okay, Eddie Hearn, I know this is the promoter in you speaking. Lewis was responding to an Eddie Hearn post where Eddie Hearn talked about the winner of Anthony Joshua versus Francis Ngannou eventually fighting the winner of Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk. So here's how Lewis continued his post. So I'll break it down like the boxing fan I am. If AJ beats Ngannou, which he should, does that elevate him to a shot at undisputed? Beating Valen and Ngannou? Question mark. There's a much better case for the winner of Parker versus Zhang. Right now, folks, let me just add my two cents. Of all the boxing names you just heard, I believe there's a better heavyweight who's not even being discussed. By the way, that's how deep the heavyweight division is. And that heavyweight is the man who beat Gili Zhang. His name is Philippe Ergovic. Right? So, we're talking about all this consolidation. Uh, Joshua, two-time heavyweight champ, great set of skills, He's the heavyweight division's box office king in my eyes, right? But the point's a valid one. You beat Otto Wallen, then you beat a guy in his, what, second professional fight at a time when the heavyweight division is deep. Just in terms of former champs, you have Andy Ruiz, you have Deontay Wilder, you have Charles Martin, right? That's just former champs, right? You also have, of course, young Lions who are unbeaten. Jared Anderson comes to mind. And we're supposed to believe that if Anthony Joshua beats Ngannou, 
that he warrants the shot at the undisputed title. What about the guy who beat Jili Zhang? What about the Parker Zhang winner? Understand, when you're dealing with a guy, a boogeyman, who has CBE status, even some of boxing's biggest promoters have to tread lightly. This is going to be a tough sell for the fans. Right? It is a tough sell for the fans. Folks, let me just add my two cents too. I believe there's a better than 50% chance and, by the way, the posted odds are not that far off from what I'm saying here. I believe there's a better than 50% chance that Usyk beats Fury. Right? Would Joshua, off the strength of beating Nganu, jump the line to fight Usyk a third time? Or would the promoters be more interested in that than having Usyk fight in my world, Philippe Ergovic, or in having Usyk fight the winner of Zhang Parker. Right, folks, the heavyweight division has a lot of moving parts. Let me just say I applaud Lennox Lewis for having his voice heard, for being a thorn in the side of these promoters. Right, boxing fans want to see the very best, right? To prove you're the very best, you're going to have to do better than beating Valen and Nganu, right? Just food for thought, right? I thought AJ was going to pivot toward Philippe Ergovic, right? Instead, he pivoted toward Nganu, according to reports, and these reports may or may not be true, AJ is getting $50 million to fight Nganu, who could net $20 million. Now, this is prize fighting. I don't blame any fighter for getting tapped on the shoulder, getting a $50 million offer, and then saying, you know what, I'll, I'll take that deal. <laughs> it's like, I've already been heavyweight champ twice. Uh, I'll pivot here. I don't need to fight Ergovic right now. I'll pivot and I'll fight a guy in a second pro fight. Right, But as the former undisputed heavyweight champ is pointing out, right, Lennox Lewis, that sequence of fights doesn't warrant fighting the winner of Fury Usyk. Let's talk about the British title. And this is important because 168 pounds, where we're talking about, is loaded. Because the situation is changing, right? How much longer is Benavides going to be able to make 168 pounds? What exactly is the deal with the Jamal Charlo comeback where he has to fight at a catch weight? Right? Christian and Billy looked great. Young guy, athletic. He's calling out Canelo. Terence Crawford is calling out Canelo. Folks, isn't Canelo at this point the, more, the most called out man in boxing? Well, understand, life has changed. Saudi Arabia now is paying top dollar for fights, and I mean top dollar. But to get to Saudi Arabia, you need to have something that distinguishes you. One of those things, given that, let's face it, for this generation, the UK is one of the hotbeds of boxing, is a British title in a division. Let's remember, you just had a fight. J.O. Pattaya, he fought some unbeaten British guy. Right? There was another side of the equation in that fight. And for the contender, they're also getting... In some cases, life-altering paydays. So the winner of Jack Cullen, who is six foot three, 168 pounds, right? Only in boxing do you get this. Sometimes in the NBA, but really very few sports. 
Here is Jack Cullen, six foot three, 168 pounds, and he's fighting in a rematch, Zach Chelly. Now, let me pivot here. It needs to be said there are other names at 168 pounds. If you want to see a tall guy who knows what he's doing, right? He's not quite as tall as Jack Cullen, but he's close and he's young and he's fearless. The kind of fearlessness that being unbeaten can give you. I want people to Google Diego Pacheco, right? He fought Jack Cullen. He beat Jack Cullen. He has a sneaky, excellent, straight right hand. He's a puncher. He's a tall guy who, like Cullen, doesn't ignore your body. He'll hit you with body shots. He also has what I like, a center of gravity that allows him to lean back. With the tall guy, that gives him a defensive edge. Now, he KO'd Jack Cullen. You need to be aware of that. Right? He KO'd Jack Cullen. Let me also point out, too, that Kevin Sajo also recently KO'd Jack Cullen. Right? Jack Cullen is that guy who's a little bit older, who might be a little bit weight-drained at 168 pounds. In my opinion, he's vulnerable to getting hurt. He has a good set of skills. Folks, his jab is a nice jab. I like his jab a lot. We'll give it a B plus. Right, the problem is, and style-wise, this is a must-watch fight. It's for the British title at 168 pounds. Style-wise, Cullen is a jabber who uses length, right? In an ideal Cullen fight, he keeps you away from him with that jab. He can win slow rounds, right? He's a tall guy who's hard to get to. The problem here is the other style he's facing. Zach Chelly is what I call an ambush fighter. If you're in a fight style, this is one of those must-watch fights. What that means is, Chelly, even though he's facing a 6'3 guy with a nice jab, Chelly is going to use his feet to be too far away to get hit with the jab. Then when Cullen pulls the jab back, Chelly is going to ambush him. This is the guy who's outside hiding outside. Then he jumps in the pocket with the combination. Think Jermel Charlo at 154. The problem I have here, and keep in mind, Shelly is not that big a puncher. But the problem I have here is that Cullen has been getting hurt in fights. Folks, he's down hard in the Diego Pacheco fight. In the Sajo fight, and understand, if Kevin Hart, the comedian, the great comedian, were a boxer, he would be Kevin Sajo, the French fighter. Sajo was just too athletic for him. Sajo, different than Chelly. Chelly has an element of surprise, right? Chelly jumps in, ambushes you, then leaves, doesn't stay in the pocket. Sajo jumps in, stays in the pocket. He's what I call a pressure fighter. He's a shorter guy. He was able to land wicked body shots on Jack Cullen. Cullen, who knows how to clinch, couldn't get Sajo to stop throwing punches. Cullen ultimately wilted. The bet I like here, even though Chelly doesn't have a big punch, and even though this is a rematch, right? it's a rematch, folks, of a fight that went the distance and was a draw. The bet I like here, based on current odds, 
is the under 10 and a half rounds. Folks, because it's for the British title at 168, it's a 12 round fight. This is a high over under for a fight involving a guy who's been stopped two times in recent fights. I like the under 10 and a half. Understand how much the public thinks this fight's going to go the distance. Believe it or not, you're getting for the under 10 and a half. That gives you to the midway point of the 11th round. The casinos are giving you a plus 185. Let me repeat that, a plus 185. So you have some leverage to play with. The hedge is the taller fighter, Cullen, at a minus 130 simply to win. In other words, if this fight goes the distance and Cullen wins, you're hedged. If Cullen gets a stoppage before the midway point of the 11th round, you're in the penthouse. You're winning on both sides of the play. If Zach Chelly gets a stoppage before the midway point of the 11th round, you collect on a plus 185, right? Which is greater than the minus 130. But I need for gamblers to understand the risk involved with what I'm suggesting here. If the fight makes it past the midway point of the 11th round and Zach Chelly wins, either by KO or by decision, you lose it all. Right? This is a must-watch fight. I need for people to think this through, too. With so much happening at 168 pounds, with so many names, older names, Canelo, newer names, Christian and Billy, right, wanting a shot. With people like Billy Joe Saunders coming back, there's a possibility that the winner of this fight, who would then become the British 168 super middleweight champion, might be able to punch their ticket to fight for big money in Saudi Arabia against one of the bigger names, right? If you're Canelo and half of the sport wants to fight you and you want to spread your brand, right? Canelo, box office king, he certainly is known in Saudi Arabia, but if Canelo wanted to keep in touch with his fans in the United Kingdom, wanted to cross the Atlantic, keep his name in the news, possibly to preface a fight it later in Saudi Arabia involving perhaps Crawford, perhaps Benavides, perhaps Billy, perhaps Morel, right? Or if Canelo just wants to see the lay of the land in Saudi Arabia, needs a credible name on the card, but really wants to take it easy on a trip across the Atlantic, he might choose this guy. This guy being whoever wins this fight for the British Championship at 168 pounds. Right? Style-wise, these are the kind of fights I love. A tall guy, 6'3", 168 pounds, with an excellent jab, who is going to force the opponent to have to do something. Right? The opponent is going to have to find a way to get around that jab. To make this a fight, if you're a shorter opponent fighting a guy with a good jab and height and some boxing skills, right, who can also throw pretty good hooks to the body, you have to find a way to force the issue because you understand if you stay outside and get hit all day with that jab, you lose. Well, he's fighting a guy who knows him, right, has already fought him, who's an ambush fighter. So you're going to have, and it's going to be obvious, a lot of strategy involved here. Kelly's going to be outside walking around like he doesn't have a care in the world. Cullen's going to try to cut the distance off so he can land that jab. Then Kelly's going to try to do an ambush, duck under the jab, get inside, 
let his hands go like there's no tomorrow. Chelly throws combinations when he jumps into the pocket, right? Chelly understands in the four or five ambushes around that he hopes to have, he needs to do enough damage to convince the judges that he has won the three-minute round. Right, so circle this fight on your calendar. It's Jack Cullen against Zach Chelly. Right, just understand the way it's structured at sports books. The public expects this fight to go the distance. Just be aware of the fact that Cullen has been going down of late. Look how hurt he is against Diego Pacheco. Right, let me also point out too. Diego Pacheco is kind of like the unknown guy in the weight class, right? He's the guy gamblers like me love. I see him against Jack Cullen and then I'm surprised. I'm like, what, Pacheco is close to Jack Cullen in height? Then I see both guys land straight right hands. Only Pacheco's straight right hand seems to have more pop. Then of course, Pacheco doesn't even allow the fight to get to the second half of the fight. This is the young guy who is a closer, right? 168 may be more loaded than you think. Let me also point out, too, I know I was on BoxRec.com. I see they have Chris Eubank, a guy who, by the way, Janabek has been begging to fight him, right? Janabek in interviews will call out Eubank. Eubank is that vet who has money in the bank, right? So Eubank is picking opponents. He's not rushing to fight Janabek, right? And of course, sites like BoxRec put Eubank atop 160 pounds. If Janabek gets tired of 160, right? Janabek also has been calling out Jamal Charlo, but we're hearing about Jamal Charlo, marital problems, uh, health concerns, and all this other stuff, right? You're getting the full gamut there. Right, PBC needs to figure out a way, quite frankly, to give us fights and not excuses. Uh, I'm still sore to hear that that Danny Garcia, Eris Landy, Lara fight isn't on deck, right? Well, don't be surprised if John Abeck decides, look, I can't get a dance partner at 160. Let me jump to 168. A lot's going on here, right? I'm just telling you folks, in my opinion, John Abeck is on my short list of the best in the sport pound for pound, right? So when you see a division like 168, and when you see a fight taking place that's for the British title, right? And when you're looking at the fighters and you see defined styles that would give guys problems, and when you know that there's some debts out there that Jack Cullen needs to repay, Right? I'm sure he has Diego Pacheco on his mind. I'd be surprised if he doesn't have Kevin Sajo on his mind. Right? You need to pay attention to this fight. To sum up, I like the under 10.5 rounds at a plus 185, hedged with Cullen at a minus 130 simply to win. Let me hear how you're playing it in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.